Legend of War here, and today we've got a rating your Doomstack video covering an Empire Imperial Griffin Doomstack. So what we've got here is loads of Amber Wizards, right? And you might think this is a Wizard Doomstack, and it kind of is. But the thing is with the Amber Wizard is that it's the only Imperial Wizard that's able to ride a mount aside from like the, the Imperial Pegasus. So them on a griffin makes them actually the best melee combatant out of them it's not about using their magic but that being said they're able to provide extra winds of magic and extra recharge right into the army however one downside to the amber wizard as a um, as a melee combatant is that they tend to have pretty low hit points and low melee defense so they can be quite squishy also going up against a single army of zinch and for some reason the order resolve says crushing defeat so what that means here is that the game recognizes that our army is actually stronger than theirs, but it also thinks that we'll lose. So it's this is not good in order resolve if this is the case here. So it's not a good order resolve army. Let's jump in here and see how it performs manually. Another thing, guys, we are two weeks away from the end of the year live stream for 24 hour charity live stream. We are 1,200 subscribers away from achieving our goal of 455,000 subscribers by the end of the year in order to get a, a This Is Total War campaign out of it. The charity live stream goes on no matter what, but you're only 1,200 subscribers away. So I think that many of you are just sitting on the edge being like, I don't know if I'll subscribe or not. I'll see if other people will, will get us over the line. Well, it turns out that the, everyone's counting on you now to hit that subscribe button. We don't have far to go. If you guys want to leave it right into the last minute, that's entirely up to you. But I just want to remind you that we're getting really close to the time, and we're really close to the goal. It's definitely achievable, because I know that about 35% of you guys that watch this video are not subscribed. And even if only a small portion of you subscribe, we'll get there today. So it's entirely up to you. Okay. Now, there's many things to consider with this kind of army here going up against the Zinch army, because there's loads of items and abilities, right? And a lot of players can end up in a trap of making sure that they're babysitting abilities and end up missing the bigger picture. Because this army here, the way that it dishes out damage is uh, through missile attacks, if we're in unfavorable engagements, that is way more detrimental to us than not using a Helm of Discord at the right time, or not casting Pan's Impenetrable Belt. Um, Pan's impenetrable pelt. Try and say that five times fast. So, things to keep in mind, because this is the kind of battle where I'll fight it to the best of, you know, to how I fee see fit, and people will be like, oh my god, he didn't use that ability. So we'll go over the abilities and I'll explain why I'm not really going to use them. So, Pan's impenetrable pelt. Probably not going to cast a spell at all until at least all the demons are gone. Why? Because the demons are the biggest concern and they all have magical attacks. So having an extra 20% physical resistance isn't really going to help. The speed and melee defense definitely will, but I'm not really going to focus on that. Um, the Curse of Anra here. That's a good debuff spell for sure. I will probably use this later on in the battle, uh, but not at the beginning because it's... Um, We'll be able to beat these guys in melee easily enough, and yeah, we could use it, but I just it's not going to have any serious impact, because if you ever look, our melee attack is way higher than me their melee defense anyway, so it's just not something we need to worry about. Um, Amber Spear, don't even bother, waste of time. We sit here casting Amber Spear, we're just going to get killed by these soul grinders. If we ever look at how much damage they dish out, 510, with anti-large. No, standing out here is just not acceptable. we got to go into melee and close in quickly. Their missile damage is greater than our magic damage. And then we've got things like Wisdom's Wild Form, Waste of Time, Flock of Doom. Uh, good spell, but primarily used against infantry. But the thing is, our priority here needs to be against the single entity demons. The first thing we got to get rid of is the Demon Prince of Zinch. Melee, just go in and melee him. That's all we got to do. Then our second priority needs to be taking out this one here, just because it's the up in the sky. Third priority needs to be getting rid of the um, the soul grinders because they're anti-large and high damage output. These guys here definitely have high damage output as well, but they're kind of inaccurate and kind of derpy. Um, I think that's something that we can kind of not worry too much about. But once once those are done, then we can think about casting more spells. What we really need to be prioritizing in terms of spells is, is um, healing. We've also got a Fire Wizard in here, which is good, for sure. But none of the spells are particularly useful against this army here, apart from Flamestorm, which I'd like to try to 
not use just for the sake of trying to use the griffins because that's the whole point of this doomstack here is a wizard army that you use in melee worth building we've also got this guy who as long as he can come around the flank a little bit he should be fine all right so these two keep them in the rear them over here i think we've also got a frost heart phoenix as well i think that's a very good choice of an alliance unit because that's a a debuff that doesn't require a click that is a pretty significant uh, anti-damage effect, especially on Cinch that doesn't have very high melee attack in the first place. Alright, get in there as quickly as we can. Let's go. You get moving. So I want him to go around the flank. Now this is a battle that I imagine is going to happen fairly quickly, just because of the squishy nature of their army, the squishy nature of our army, and also just extreme damage dealing. So we can see here as well, the balance of power was in our favor right from the get-go. Order Resolve didn't give us the win, so it's not a good Order Resolve army. Now, typically speaking, I don't rate armies well on being um, super strong in order resolve, but I think it's important for late game grind to um, to not have to fight every battle manually, or else people get fatigued. Get over here. All right. Pop down some abilities. Like I said, not overly important. Don't need to focus on it too much. Popping down the same ability, same item, over and over again isn't going to do anything. It can only be effective once. Okay, got to get rid of this one here. Get around the side. Okay, these are almost gone. We're getting shot. Okay, land on the Soul Grinders. You come over here, try and fight that Exalted Flame up. Okay, damage is fairly evenly spread out, which is good. Okay, let's use a Curse of Andrew here, there. That is a good ability. Okay, let's pop down a buff there. We're taking damage really quickly. So are they. Regrowth on this one here. Okay, might want to actually pull this one out. So take taking damage really quickly. Okay, these guys here up in the sky. This guy here, get him out of there. These two, get him back. Yeah, you keep fighting that, you're doing just fine. I know those buffs would be good on our army here, but I need to sort of pin down that one. Okay, this is a bit of a engagement here. Not super favorable because of the anti-large infantry. But like I said, the main thing is stop their soul grinders from shooting. Okay, we've got some guys over here that are in pretty bad shape. Heal quickly. Like I said, all this stuff happens really damn fast. Okay, I'm fighting in two different areas is cast. Okay, you're done over there. You get over there. That knight is hanging back. He says battle happens really quick. Don't use dwellers below. Don't use dwellers below. In raiding Doomstack videos, we don't use dwellers below. Okay, we've got some guys over here that are pretty badly damaged. I've got to keep healing. Okay, put that on the wrong one, actually. Okay, Curse of Vandera here again. Don't use Pans and Pans and Pills, it's just not worth it. Against um, almost entirely magical damage. Yeah, everything's got magic damage with Singe. This is no point. Um, although melee defense is good. Get this one out of here before it dies. Very squishy, very squishy. Okay, we're taking too much damage. We need to pull back and heal. We need to pull back and heal. Or at least get into a blob. Get into a blob. What are you doing? You in here? Yep. Buff, buff, buff. Okay, I would use Dwellers Below, but like I said, we better try to do this without it. Because it's such a good ability. Wins the battles for us. Get that one out of there. Oh god, it's gonna be close. If we're gonna... Win without any of them getting killed. Get in there. Stop that one. Keep healing. And we did it. Okay. Because, yeah, the thing is with Zinch, you've got, kind of got to take him out quickly or else they start using ridiculous amounts of army abilities. 
So yeah, it can definitely handle a, a good, strong enemy army. Like, that's a tough army to deal with. If you had any other Empire army, I, I'd imagine you would have lost uh, in this situation here, because Zinch armies can be very damn dangerous. Unless you had, like, a Steam Tank Doomsnake. That's something that could have taken this out pretty easily, actually. And then we could do a bit of healing. But the guy doesn't need the save file sent back in, so don't worry about that. So yeah, when you've got an all-hero base army, one big trap that a lot of people can get into is using abilities for the sake of abilities that have low impact. It's best to just not worry about that kind of stuff. Like, popping down every single buff and debuff or using every single item um, can be a big trap. It's way more important to make sure the units are actually in good engagements, which, for the most part, we did, but there was some situations where they were fighting Chosen, which we should have tried to avoid. Now, we could have uh, healed a whole bunch of that and probably ended up with a decisive victory, but... Yeah, it's fine. Whole point of this is to test it out, not actually to show it being used perfectly. That's what disaster battles are for. Which this definitely was not. Now, rating this. Um, it's definitely strong, but it's also squishy. So in terms of other hero-based Doomstack, this is sort of like a medium to high strength. Uh, practicality is actually quite practical because that cost is not so bad. Because we're playing the uh, or uh, Golden Order, we've got reduced upkeep cost minus 50% for battle wizard heroes. Um, if we have a look, are these disciplined? Yeah, so how many of them are disciplined? Yeah, they're all disciplined. So it's actually a disciplined Amber Wizard Doomstack. So doing that will be very time consuming, although um, getting specific traits for your heroes as the Empire is actually not that difficult because of how many different types of wizards you've got. It's actually, if you're recruiting and disbanding a wizard every single turn, you've actually got about a 50% chance of getting disciplined. Um, it's actually very high because no trait, like I'll just show you if I go to a wizard area. No wizard there. I have, uh, seen your have to go back up here. I'm trying to explain exactly how this works. Alright, so you've got eight different laws, sorry, seven different laws of magic, right? And each trait can only show up twice, uh, sorry, once. So if you have a look here, there are no duplicates. Now, there are seven trait, sorry, seven wizards here, seven types of wizards, and two of each type, which means that there's 14 traits in total. The thing is with the Empire, is that they only have 15 traits, which means at any given time, only one trait is not being shown. So, for example, if I didn't want this disciplined um, Shadow Wizard, if I recruit and disband him, and because I wanted to get a Amber Wizard, right? And then I recruit and disband him. Who seeks my power? The chances of this Amber Wizard here getting a disciplined trait is roughly one in three because this guy here is also going to roll for disciplined as well he might get it uh, only one of them can get it or none of them can get it there are three available traits you know 33 percent chance he'll get the right one and um if this guy here doesn't get disciplined then you don't need to recruit and disband him which means if this guy here if all of them have a, a wizard in the re recruit pool but you've got one empty with this one and you recruit and disband that one um you've actually got a 50 50 chance of getting disciplined so getting an all disciplined wizard army doesn't actually take that long and then of course you can also just um save your wizards but since you've got such high recruit rank you actually might be better off um not doing that because recruiting a level 23 wizard by loading up a character will cost you a lot of money whereas doing it this way like how much did that cost us like nothing just because of all the different global bonuses we've got yeah it costs next to nothing doing that so it's just about getting your capacity up which for the empire isn't too hard because you can increase your capacity i think at rank three let me just check that yeah, at uh, tier 3, you can increase your capacity for Battle Wizards, so it's, it's quite easy to get the capacity up. In terms of cost, definitely good. We've got uh, 12 supply lines there, so that's a good number of armies, and this is still just dirt cheap. If we have a look at other armies, it's actually cheaper than this army here, and this one. It's cheaper than it. 
despite it being full of wizards. See, one of the things that made this army not particularly viable in Warhammer 2 was that it was ridiculously expensive. So the fact that it's really cheap is really good, okay? That, that actually makes it more practical in Warhammer 3 than it was in 2, despite the nerfs to Winds of Magic. Because uh, if this was Warhammer 2, our Winds of Magic reserve would probably be somewhere in like six, 700. Um, but of course, it takes a long time to actually make use of it. Um, it's really strong. It's relatively easy to use as long as you're not going up against a difficult opponent. Um, Zinch is always going to be a difficult opponent to sort of get in there and not get at least somewhat wrecked. Just the nature of fighting Zinch, you know, them popping down Storm of Fire or this one or just using some shenanigans. Uh, AI doing some stuff that they shouldn't be doing. But Zinch is always a pain in the ass. So overall, I think it's a really good Doomsday. It's actually better in Warhammer 3 than it was in 2. And then, of course, it just depends on how much equipment you want to put in to, to give them, um, you know, upgrades. So the more um, Helm of... Uh, not just for Helm of Discords, what's it called? Trickster's Helm is a good one, especially against Zinch. Uh, Armor of Destinies, uh, Talisman of Preservation, to so get that ward safe, get their melee defense up, missile resistance, that kind of stuff. That will be really handy. If we have a look at how they've been leveled up... Yeah... Definitely going to want that Missile Resistance. But yeah, their biggest um, weakness is going up against stuff with lots of Missile Damage. So Dark Elves could be a big concern with this one. And also things that have particularly high melee attack, like Anti-Large, because their melee defense is particularly low. But you can overcast Pan's Impenetrable Pelt to get a bit of extra melee defense, but you really got to stay on top of it, because it only lasts for 31 seconds, which isn't that long. It's definitely on sort of like the medium level in terms of... Um, duration of a buff uh, there are worse spells and there are better spells uh, but overall i think it's a well-made doom stack that's not 100 percent perfect which is good we don't want it to be 100 percent perfect because you know you see we did see a doom stack before that had all like perfect equipment um it was good to see that it it uh didn't have that um so to sort of gauge we don't want it to rely too heavily on it just having amazing equipment and he had quite a few helm of discords at turn 139 you kind of expect to get a fair few of them because they're a really good item uh, but overall, really good Doomstack, and that's the end of this one. Here, guys, let me know in the comments below what you think of this particular Doomstack. It's a bit of a weird one because um, it's a wizard Doomstack, but you're not really using them as wizards. They, they're melee units. It's a, it's a melee wizard Doomstack. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think of it. Don't forget to subscribe. We're so close to 455,000 subscribers. We only need 1,200 more. You could get that done today, and then be at ease that, hey, this is Total War. Uh, will happen at the end of the year. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for all the support recently, and we'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.